what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel today's video we're going to do a little bit of a combination of aero theory uh, 3d printing CAD modeling and aerodynamics designing a little tiny piece that's going to go pretty much from this flare that I made down to about this body line to kind of block the air from hitting the front of the tire but what we're going to do is we're going to steal a little bit of an idea from the OEMs that are uh, newer Mustangs have it. I think like newer like Toyotas, like Camrys and stuff. I'll try and put a overlay on the screen of what I'm talking about. But if you kind of squeeze the air through a duct and then exit it kind of going along the side of the tire, you end up with a drag decrease, which will be cool. So that way I can kind of you know, shape the air around the front of the tire a little bit better, uh, a little more advantageous, obviously, for, for racing purposes. But yeah, we're going to kind of just take some measurements. Um, I don't have like a 3D scanner, so what we're going to do is take some measurements and some 2D pictures, overlay them in the CAD software and kind of like trace our shape and then kind of, you know, model it from there. So yeah, let's uh, let's get started making these. The other thing worth noting, obviously the splitter is not on it, but we have that outer tunnel and flap like right about here that kind of comes, you know, almost up to this body line, which is why we're not going to stand it all the way down. If you just have a splitter and nothing and the air is hitting this tire, you're doing yourself a disservice. You could just run like some flat piece of something down. It's better than nothing. Um, so yeah, consider that. That's kind of why I'm doing it this way. Um, I'm in a little bit of a different scenario than most people. All right, guys, so now that I took the measurements of my car, let's say this is the wheel. You know, here's the uh, splitter, the wheel well, and I kind of have a, uh, a flare that kind of comes up this way. The canard is kind of shoots right above it. Uh, it might be a little hard to see. Um, and then I have that outer tunnel that goes about here, and then I have that flap right there. So the duct is going to come down uh, probably something like this and then what we're gonna do is kinda like channel try and channel the air through the duct out like just outboard of the tire so I guess uh, let's see let's erase this from a so if we're looking at the car kinda coming like this way now um, so here's the edge of the tire here's the flare already the duct is gonna kinda go something like this we're gonna have a little bit of a, you know, exit like that. But going forward, looking at looking at the car like front on, let's see, will be. I don't want to draw this. So there's the flare going up and over. The tire is something like this. And you gotta think the bumper, since it's in front of it, the duct will kind of be somewhere around here. The inlet, well that's the tire, so the inlet will be about this large, while on the back side it'll be much smaller, kind of shooting back off this way. I hope this is all kind of making sense a little bit. I have it up in my head. Uh, so once I do a 3D model, um, it should make a little bit more sense. And then when it gets to printing, all we got to do is in the slicer software, just mirror it and it'll be set up for the opposite side. So. So let's get these on the, uh, get the pictures on the computer um, and kind of get this modeled. Alright guys, so here's the 3D model. I'll take you through what I did real quick, but you can see how the, the vent kind of shoots through it. And then out the back, out a smaller volume area. So those pictures that I took earlier, once you upload them, oops, we want to view this sketch. So you can see how I kind of trace this curve, the wheel well. That's pretty much the only tracing I needed. Now I did end up going straight across here. So what I'm going to do is just cut the uh, carbon flare right here. Um, so this can go on uh, simple enough for that. But I kind of, I just started by dimensioning this to be equal to the tape measure. So that way I know I'm working within a box that, that will fit 
you know, I, I clear this, although if I had to move that Zeus, that's not a big deal. Um, so once I got my sketch done um, and extruded it, you can get rid of that. And if we come all the way up to this bit, you can see, so there's like my very first initial you know, block or, or shape, if you will. Um, so let's get out of that. So once I did that, um, I radius this front corner to match the radius of the um, of the flare that's already on the car. Then once I did that, I was able to do so this sketch right here, you know, that's the inlet duct or you know, opening the outlet drew that on that plane right there. So you can see how we're much smaller and it's also higher and we'll get to that in just a second. So then the loft function is pretty cool. So what that does is, you know, face of uh, this sketch and this sketch. So a loft is just kind of, you know, it shoots. Um, uh, you can either add material or remove material. Obviously we removed it from one sketch to another sketch in like a nice smooth uh, way. So you can do, so here, let's do this. Um, shaded with hidden edges. This should show up, um, but you can see these, uh, you know, hidden edges in there now. Let's get it right, normal too. So you can kind of already see the, advan the advantage of that loft, putting that second one higher. What we're getting here is little tiny wing profiles basically. Um, tinkering around with, so none, you'll see how it changes that line right there. Same thing from the front, or you know, if we look down from the top, let's see, let's get a top view. Um, we were on, so watch this line change. If you hit normal too. So it just smooths it out in, but it also gives us that shape we want on the side. And then you can also change the magnitude. So let's say if we did a four. Whoops, that actually doesn't even let us do four. So like a three or something. You know, that's not a very good looking shape though. Um, so it just kind of worked out that like the default looked pretty good. I tinkered around with like one, one and a quarter on these numbers over here. Um, so you can kind of tinker with them to get different, different like curvatures and everything. So. That kind of gave me the duct. After I did the duct work, um, or you know, the, the loft, did some fillets around it on the inlet side just to kind of smooth everything out a little bit. Um, slightly different size fillets, that's why there's a handful of them over here. This last extrude was to, oops, was to knock off this little bit of the wheel well that I traced earlier that I mentioned. So, let's see. So that was that one. A um, few more fillets. And then the very last thing I did was this face that's going to be, let's get rid of these hidden edges because now it's getting a little bit uh, shaded. Um, so now you can see the mounting surface. So again, if we kind of bring up where is it? Sketch one. You know how it mounts to the car, the bumper. The bumper, even though there's a little bit of a curve, I'm treating it as flat. Um, isn't really worth trying to get that curvature. It's flat enough where once you screw it on, this will, it, it'll meet up good enough. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, so last bit is these holes that are on here. So. I just kind of put them randomly where I kind of thought they would look good. You know, we got plenty of meat up here and the rear ones, the only two that poke through are this one and this one uh, where it gets a little bit thin. Uh, that shouldn't be too much of an issue because we're almost a half inch thick right here. We'll use a coarse thread screw just directly into the plastic. There shouldn't be a lot of loading on this part. Um, but then what I was able to do was this part two right here. You can see now it's gray. Um, so part two, we can, here, let's move it, uh, transform, translate by XZ. So there you go, you can see we have like a whole separate piece. So what I'm going to do, 
keep that. Um, obviously, this gets all printed out as one. I'll print this out, and this will be the template with the perfect, uh, you know, location for the holes to drill on the bumper. So that's really about it. Oh yeah. So and then the last thing I did was you can see it down here on the bottom. The if we bring the hidden edges back in. And zoom in here I ended up just kind of making this go up give us a little tiny bit of a wing profile and we'll, we'll get a tiny little vortice coming off here back uh, spinning that way down the side of the car so you know I didn't it's something this small it's just kind of going off the top of my head through like what I know should be advantageous um, but yeah that's about it so then once we did that we put it into the slicer. So there's the template. That's, that was the last one I did. I'll get the other one loaded up. All right, so here it is in the slicer. So this is just imported directly from the CAD software. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do it. It's actually printing out right now. Um, so what I ended up doing was the... I was thinking about printing it on this face. Oops. Go another um, because it's a big face mounted to the build plate but then you got see all that red underneath it here and this it couldn't be printed without that like that's a long bridge to try and make um, so I ended up doing it I ended up printing it off of so I ended up printing it on Oops. There we go. That face right there. Because once you get to the top, this little bridge right here is only about a half inch. So the printer can bridge that gap, no problem. Um, and then slicing it, I changed a few settings, but you can see down here, it's about a five hour print. So it's not very quick. And that's with a 0.3, I'm sorry, a 0.6 nozzle. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of about it for the design and CAD and get it set up to print. So yeah, once the print gets done, um, I mentioned earlier, I'll just mirror it to print the other side. I'm only doing one because it's a five hour print. Just in case I need to like tweak it or modify it, um, I can then just like reprint it rather than printing two that might be wrong. So yeah, once I get, um, you know, once that first one's done, I'll get it mocked up and kind of, uh, you know, easy enough to kind of wrap this project up once we have that done. All right, guys, so this is trimmed, and then I reprinted the template. So as you can see, the holes on the template line up perfect with the part. So all I have to do is just kind of put this up here where it needs to go, you know, drill my holes out. The holes are printed into this, so all I gotta do is just screw it in at that point. Well, I messed up. I'll show you guys what I did. Once I installed it, you can see how far off we are. If I push on it, I'm not really pushing on it that hard. You can see it, it kinda lines up much better. But what happened is, with all these body lines down here, this part of the bumper is much stronger. Up here is just basically like flat carbon. Um, so when I bolted or screwed this on, it didn't take as much shape of the bumper as I thought. This actually kind of pulled this corner of the bumper out. So that's why we're way off right here. So what I did was, so I reprinted it. You can see almost the same thing, but if you look down this side here, I think you can see how that's that's curved so that curvature should kind of allow the bumper to rest normally and when I screw it on this will just kind of you know lay in a little bit more plus I took I think like an eighth of an inch total thickness off of this top here so we're just gonna put on the new one um, and see what we get and that's kind of like one of the cool things about the 3d printing I don't know it's maybe 20 25 cents in plastic now it's a sort of long print but it's you know, very inexpensive to kind of 
you know, if you, if you print something out and it's not quite right, you can kind of just remodel it and print it again. So yeah, let's get this on, see what we get. All right, so here's the new one installed. You can see much closer to fitting. I missed a little bit on, I kind of just have it a little bit further forward than I think I should. Um, the issue with that, the bumper, where I have the hole is like so far rearward on the bumper. I'm kind of just running out of space. So knowing what I kind of learned on this side, let's go to the other side. I moved it back just a tiny bit. So this all kind of lines up a little bit better from the top. You can see it looks pretty good. So with the wheel on this side, you can kind of really start to see, you should be able to see some light through there, right there. So the air as it kind of, whatever doesn't hit like the canard, remember we have like the splitter, uh, the side plate, the tunnel, where we already have stuff trying to get air out the side. From the back, you can kind of see the angle that the air is going to be coming out should kind of like just come across the side of the tire which would be nice so what I could do is you know I could just tape up that hole you know do do a session um, and then pull the tape off we're talking something so small I don't I don't even know if my uh, data will like be able to pick up that amount of a gain but Anytime I was in the wind tunnel and we did something to block air from hitting the tire, it was always a performance uh, improvement. So downforce went up, drag went up, but not as much as downforce. So it was a net efficiency gain across the whole car. So that's why I know these things are better than nothing. And I kind of tried to just fancy them up a little bit. Um, so yeah, so that's where I'm gonna call this one. This was a fun little project. You know, kind of had the, uh, the aero theory, uh, the CAD modeling, the 3D printing. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also consider hitting that subscribe button down below to keep up to date with future projects. As always guys, thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one.